Hey, good Monday, everyone. It's 21 News Chief Meteorologist Eric Wilhelm here. It's the video we call Weather for Weather Geeks. It is a remarkably quiet forecast here in mid-September. We'll talk about the lack of rain that we expect in the coming days in this video. But first, we'll start with a little review of where we've uh, been since we last did Weather Geeks. We had some uh, heavy, gusty storms in parts of the area Friday. Caused some localized damage in parts of eastern Columbiana County over into Beaver County, PA. And this, of course, was followed by a real autumnal chill, especially at the start of the weekend. Saturday's high just 63. We did 68 yesterday and 76 today. Now 76 is much closer to the average, of course. Our average high at this time of the year is 77, and we'll go above the average starting tomorrow. Now, with those uh, scattered showers and storms on Friday, we did register 0.83 at the Youngstown Warren Airport in Vienna and another 0.16 with residual overnight and morning showers on Saturday. In fact, we had a couple of raindrops that tried to linger into the afternoon. Now, uh, we're up to 0.99 at the airport, but we're going to stay at that number for a long time. So we're already in a deficit of 0.2 at the airport for the month, and that deficit will continue to grow. We may not see rain until sometime after the 20th. You know, we're talking 10, 11 days from now. Uh, so, yeah, things are not looking great for drought-stricken parts of Ohio and Pennsylvania. Now, of course, if you've been watching this video of late, I've been talking about how, yes, it's dry in our television viewing area, but it's much drier and much more of a serious situation. Not far to our south, from uh, Jefferson and Harrison counties, even parts of Carroll County and Tuscarawas County on southward towards I-70, Cambridge over to Wheeling, and heading down towards Athens, Parkersburg, Marietta. Um, it is a uh, extreme, if not exceptional, drought in many of those places. That's a designation you don't see very often in our part of the country. An exceptional drought designation is much more common in parts of the desert southwest, parts of the plain states, parts of California, um, but not so much around here. And our only one chance of, of rain looks like it's you know not going <clears> to <throat> come to fruition, and that's with Tropical Storm Francine. Now, Francine will become a hurricane over the next 24 hours. It will probably do, do some strengthening before landfall, and the current uh, track takes it up towards the Louisiana coastline by Wednesday afternoon. The current National Hurricane Center forecast calls for a Category 2 right around landfall, but you know the trend in recent years has been for kind of last-minute strengthening right before landfall. So could this be a Category 3 before it makes landfall? Sure, I wouldn't, uh, wouldn't discount that possibility, but Unfortunately for us, Francine's going to kind of die on the vine here across the Mississippi Valley late this week into the uh, weekend. Yes, it'll bring some beneficial rains to parts of the Mid-South, but it doesn't look like it's going to uh, come this far to the east. So this is one model depiction of rainfall through next week, middle and latter portions of next week. In fact, this animation stops on Tuesday, but I could have run it all the way through next Thursday even, and not a drop of rain. Uh, according to this model and most of our models for eastern Ohio and western PA. The beneficial rains will be from St. Louis and Memphis and Louisville um, on south and west. So, you know, a lot of places, Alabama, Mississippi, the Tennessee Valley, those places have been pretty dry. Um, and so they will get to some beneficial rains, but not so much around here. And the reason for that is the pattern gets a little bit blocked up here. This ridge of high pressure right here puts the stop sign on Francine's progress. So the remnants of Francine will just sort of lollygag and fall apart, if you will, um, in parts of uh, the mid-Mississippi Valley, the lower Ohio Valley, maybe the southern Appalachians. But this bulge in the jet stream right here is what's going to prevent Francine from coming to the north and the east uh, with any you know, degree of significance for our weather. So our weather will be pretty nice. Yes, we need rain, but each evening we'll have a mostly clear sky, and each evening this week we're going to have a nice space station flyby, and tonight's is probably the lousiest of the uh, five that we have coming our way this week. Only in the sky for about a minute, but if you happen to look up at 934 in the southwest sky, it'll be fairly low, reaching a maximum altitude of 21 degrees above the horizon. Tomorrow night is better, 847 p.m., the space station up there for about four minutes, southwest sky to east sky, and it reaches 33 degrees. In elevation, a lot of our recent uh, space station flybys have been in the wee hours of the morning, so I haven't mentioned them of late. Not a whole lot of people are going out to check out the Interna International Space Station at uh, 4.20 a.m., 4.30 a.m., something like that. But these evening passes, especially when the weather is nice, uh, certainly worth checking out. And just a reminder of the International Space Station, it's big, it's expensive, and it's really fast. The space station is moving at five miles 
per second. The space station has been in the news of late because it is set to be retired by the end of this decade. Um, and so the space station, you know, began construction in the late 90s, has been occupied, I believe, continuously by humans since 2000 or 2001, something like that. Uh, and so it'll be the end of an era later on this decade with the decommissioning of the International Space Station. All right, so, so Futurecast, of course, is not going to show much over the next few days. The only thing we'll get from Francine is a veil of high clouds starting Thursday afternoon and taking us into Friday. In fact, it may turn fairly cloudy for a time, at least milky sunshine. It might be the best we can do for a lot of Friday, but the rain's going to miss us a couple hundred miles to the south and to the West. And so for first uh, Friday, which was postponed in Youngstown last Friday, it's uh, going to happen this Friday. It looks good. It looks great for high school football this week, the YSU game on Saturday. And look at how consistently warm it's going to be over the next 10 days. We don't see any sort of air mass change coming our way until the latter third of September at least. So the cool weather we've had in the last couple days, it's about to go bye-bye. We go above the average by a degree tomorrow, and we'll be consistently six, seven, eight degrees above the average each of the next nine or ten days starting on Wednesday. But as always, we'll find interesting things to talk about here on the Valley's Most In-Depth Weather Forecast video. Thanks for watching on this Monday evening. Have a great rest of your night, and I'll see you on Tuesday.